Okay, so here we go. In honor of Christian Mendez, as always, we just jump right into these videos. There's no scripts. Probably tell that by listening to me. There's no scripts. There's no makeup. There's no nothing. We just go. So today is the taste test for the fajitas that I made in the crock pot. So what I did was I got the fajitas. I took them out, froze them earlier in the week. And then last night I took one of the bags, one of the quart-sized bags of the frozen fajitas, which is just the onions, the peppers, the chicken, and the fajita sauce. I put them in the freezer bags. I took it out last night. One of them defrosted it in the fridge. It heated up really easy in about two minutes because it was fully defrosted. And then I wrapped it in one of these, these mission uh, plant-powered uh, pro I, that annoys me, whatever. Plant-powered protein uh, wraps. And I'll explain why I use this. It has nothing to do with plant power. All right, so here's what it looks like. Again, I'm not a professional uh, burrito, whatever this thing is, wrapper, but that's what it looks like. Hey, look, I just I just care about taste. I put the ingredients, I put a little Frank's Red Hot, or sorry, Texas Pete, excuse me, Texas, I'm sorry, Texas Pete Red Hot Sauce on there. Uh, let's see how it tastes, see if it's any good. Okay. Well. Well, there's a lot to unpack here, and I only got a couple minutes. So, onions and peppers came out awesome. The sauce, that Frontega sauce I put on there, fantastic. I know people may want to see what it looks like, but it's really kind of pathetic. I mean, it looks like something you'd reheat at 7 Eleven at 3 o'clock in the morning when you've been out drinking all night. I'm not saying the aesthetics of this are beautiful, but again, that's why you come, that's why you come to this page. I'm not sitting here taking hours to prepare this, putting like a fig leaf or parsley or whatever on the plate. And look, I got the Jordan and Avery Fagan childhood plate right here. There's no aesthetics to this whatsoever. All right. So what is the taste? Look, the onions and peppers came out fantastic. The chicken, I use boneless, skinless chicken breast. The next time I do it, let me take one more bite to make sure I got this. Okay. Um, a little sun kiss diet on soda, hold on. So here's the deal. I didn't put any cheese on this. Mainly because I was trying to keep the calories down. But I think if you're using the boneless, skinless breast, you might want to put a little low-fat like Mexican cheese on this. Because the cheese in the, the boneless, skinless breast does get a little stringy in the crock pot. So what I'm going to do next time is, because this is definitely, I will make this again. This is outstanding. Especially the onions and peppers and the sauce. It's just, I said this already, it's fantastic. I would use boneless, skinless chicken thighs next time on this. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference in terms of calories. It's going to make some difference, but not a massive difference. It's not going to get ripped on the breasts and, and, and all, look like a snowman on the chicken thighs. But I would use those next time. I think they'll hold up much better in the crock pot. And I also probably wouldn't cook it as long. I don't think I need to cook it seven hours. I'd probably get away with five hours on low. Again, the lesson in this is these are all learning processes. These are new recipes that I'm trying. And I think the biggest problem is when people start trying to find lower fat, higher protein, higher fiber recipes, they, they find one that doesn't work out well. They do something wrong. They just give up. Look, this is a process. I've already said this. Weight loss on the global scale is very simple. And people spend all this time fighting on this. And they just stop. Right? Weight loss on the global scale is you have to burn off more energy than you take in. People say, that's rude, that's insensitive. No, that's reality. The part you have to figure out is on the local level, how do you take all your weirdness and idiosyncrasies, and you know I got more of them than anybody else, and how do you make them work for you based on your likes, dislikes, schedules, will, willingness to prepare? So you find foods that taste good to you, but still fit within your calorie needs for the day. This would definitely fit in. I will say about these, these plant protein blah, blah, blah mission tortillas, they don't taste phenomenal. They don't taste nearly as good as a regular fajita shell. And if someone tells you that, they're probably some, they're probably some member of the plant power like lobby that's trying to push this on you or push their favorite food preference on you. Or maybe they're just a mission. They're, what did they say when those guys, the FBI guys at the January 6th thing? They said they were, uh, they said they were plants. Which kind of is ironic because this is plant powered. But these guys are like, if anyone tells you these taste better than regular fajita shells, they're lying to you. But here's the deal with these suckers. They taste decent. They're soft. They, they, don't, they don't ruin the flavor of the fajita shell. Um, 
They don't take away from the flavor of everything else. They're kind of like a non-entity. But here's the reason why I picked these out and I wanted to try them. Again, I've never had these before, but I wanted to try them because it's something very important you can see on the back here. And there's another lesson in this. Number one is don't quit. Figure out things instead of getting frustrated and quitting. Look at the dietary fiber on those suckers. It's 13 grams. The protein is 7 grams. Um, and it's only 70 calories per, per tortilla. So here's the lesson in this in that when you get leaner and leaner, when you start losing more and more weight, and you start getting close to that first 10%, and say you want to go even further, say you want to lose 15, 20% of your weight, and you don't have a ton of weight to lose, it's going to be very important that how you partition or set aside your calories are going to be mainly to food types of nutrients that help spare hunger, because you're going to get hungry, and once you get hungry, it's all over. Promise me, you're in the United States of America, you have no idea what true hunger is all about, and you have no need to know what true hunger is all about, because you can go get food for really cheap Anywhere you go. So, anywhere you go. Anywhere. I mean, they're freaking sell candy bars at the hardware store, right? There's no candy bars at Home Depot. So you really do not know or you ever really be able to fully understand what hunger is. You could be hungry and there's food available, you just choose not to eat it. It's not like you're hungry and there's no food available. So what you're going to have to do is, if you're going to try and lose weight in America, you're going to have to manipulate the four stooges of weight loss. And what they are is protein, fiber, water, and moderate amounts of fat. And I found over time that those four nutrients, well, water's not really a nutrient, but you get the point. Those four things, the four stooges of weight loss, we're talking Mo, Larry, Curly, and Shemp here, tend to help you stay more full off less calories. And the problem with fat is it's very calorie dense, so it's not necessarily, you gotta be careful with it. But I find if you have a little more fat in your diet, it's, whoa, you have no fat whatsoever. If you have about 20 to 30% of your calories in fat, you're gonna find that your dietary calories that you do eat are going to go a lot further for you than, say, if you try to go too low fat. At least that's my experience. Look, if it works for you and you eat bird food and it's got a ton of fiber in it, then I'm, I'm happy for you. But you need a little bit of fat to help keep you full and, and satiate you to give your food some flavor. But that, that's why I picked these because at a certain point when you are trying to get leaner, there has to be a certain choice between uh, – look, everything I eat does not taste as flavorful as donuts and Sicilian pizza. But again, if I want to keep my body weight below 200 pounds consistently, those things have to be – I write about this in the book about this idea about explosive method versus repetition method versus maximal effort method foods. I'll talk about that later in another video. Some of your foods are going to have to have a little bit of sacrifice. And the interesting thing about these fajita shells, they've got a ton of fiber to help keep you full. They've got protein, which helps assist the protein and the fiber in the onions, peppers, and chicken to help keep you full. When you eat two or three of these, you only got about 210 calories out of three of these fajitas, and you got 39 freaking grams of fiber and 21 additional grams of protein. So it's a, and I think this is actually a really good diet food because, again, it tastes okay. It doesn't taste good for the fajita. I've already said that. But it gives you two of those dietary stooges, the protein and the fiber, with very low calories. And these are the kind of foods you're going to have to eat once you get past that initial 10, 15% of weight loss. For some people who have really crappy metabolism, look, I'm sorry. You were not blessed with a great weight loss body. You may need to start doing these about 5 or 10% into your weight loss plan. But the fajita shells, in a long story short, they came out great. As always, this is a process. Maybe some people would eat the boneless, skinless chicken breast and be like, oh, this is awesome. I don't need to change anything. But that's the individualization of the program. Again, let me say this one more time. Weight loss is the opposite of most everything in the world. Globally, it's very simple. Eat less than you burn off. But locally, it becomes incredibly complex. How do I make that simple formula work for me as an individual because I'm not like anybody else? And for me, I would say the, the crock pot in the fajitas, the crock pot fajitas in the, the, ah, the fajitas in the crock pot with chicken thighs instead of chicken breasts. And I would stick with these plant-powered uh, mission protein tortillas. They actually – I think if I ate these for about six months instead of eating the regular tortillas, these would probably taste as good because my, my taste would change a little bit. It's kind of like when I go off my diet for a couple of days, I eat nothing but like pizza and wings. And then all of a sudden, everything that used to taste good to me that I thought was like really, really good but was low fat and high protein, high fiber, it all tastes kind of crappy again all over because I think your body gets sensitized to those like those heroin flavor hits. I know food is not heroin, and I'm not going to get into a little drama. I've already done the video on, on food and addiction. I don't want to go into that again. But this was a winner. This was a definite winner with some minor changes, and that's it. So you got the video right there. You've got the – again, these are, you got, these are our ingredients right here. we got the hot sauce and the mission tortilla. I'm going to go eat another one of these for my next client. What time is it?
It is, oh crap, I got to know what's from this client. I'll see you later, but thank you everyone for checking this out, and I'll talk to everyone next time. But yeah, Fajitas Crock-Pot was not the Sussman chicken, kind of, and it was way better than my crappy interpretation of the Peterson potatoes. I'm going to modify it to another video, and I'll let you know how that goes, but goodbye.